presenting the curious case of true love and unknown minds. Hidden within the covers of Shakespeare's sonnets published in 1609 are two sonnets. 116 and 117. These are companion poems, which must be in this order. Contrary to what is in this book published in 2020, edited by Sir Stanley Wells and Paul Edmondson. Proof is in the numbers and words, and is truly authoritative. We'll start with the poems numbered. The mistake of numbering Sonnet 116 with an upside down 6 is intentional. To get us to insert the proper number, and it lets us know that numbers are to be discovered somehow in this pair of poems. The proper digits add to 17. 1 plus 1 plus 6 is 8, 1 plus 1 plus 7 is 9, and 8 plus 9 is 17. There are 34 words in both poems with uppercase letters. The 17th uppercase letter is the pronoun I. We will use the 23-letter Latin alphabet gematria values. The gematria sum of all smaller uppercase letters is 500. We subtract the number of lines in both poems. Subtract the number of words with uppercase letters. Track the sonnet numbers 116 and 117 and subtract 17 to get a digit sum number which adds to 17. The solution is somewhere on this screen, but I will give it to you at the end of the video. If we add the gematria values of both final couplets in these poems. And we subtract the number of words with uppercase letters also in these couplets. The result is a number which hides two numbers that identify the author. Let's now connect the poems. We will start with common words and themes. Both poems have the presence of minds, line one in sonnet 116 and line five in sonnet 117. Note there are 17 lines between these words, between minds and unknown. They both mention unknown. They mention error. They repeat prove in three different forms. Proved in sonnet 116, proof and prove in sonnet 117. This gives us an example of tria sunt omnia.
They both mention time. They both mention words about the weather. They have terms for sailing, three of them. Wandering Bark in Sonnet 116, Hoisted Sail in Sonnet 117, and Book, as in Booking Passage, also in 117. Wandering Bark and Hoisted Sail are on the same lines in each poem. This is an example of how identical placement of themes or words connects poems together. It's also an example of Trius and Omnia once again. There are seven terms for navigation in this pair of poems, five in Sonnet 116 and two in Sonnet 117. We have fixed mark, star, height, compass, and bears, as in bearing out in Sonnet 116. Level, as in keeping your sextant level with the horizon, and shoot, as in shooting one's bearing. Shoot and bears are on the same line in both poems. Line 12. They both allude to vision. Looks in Sonnet 116 and sight in Sonnet 117. They both have allusions to permanence, fixed mark in Sonnet 116 and constancy in 117. And of course, they are connected by love. For another example of Tria Sunt Omnia, We also have allusions to masonry, star, compass, and level. We all know what masonry you're talking about. It's another example of Tria Sunt Omnia. Along the same lines, there is an allusion to Rosicrucianism in La Sonnet 116. Both poems, pardon me, form a legal argument. And they have three commonly used legal terms. Sonnet 116 has brief, Sonnet 117 has bonds and appeal. Sonnet 116 is the opening statement, or is brief. Complete with his summation of his case. Let's read it as if we were in court. Let me not, through the marriage of true minds, admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is a never-fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark, whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. The mic drops.
Sonnet 17 is his appeal, as he says in line 13. Now I'll read it. Accuse me thus that I have scant it all, wherein I should your great deserts repay. Forgot upon your dearest love to call, where to all bonds do tie me day by day, that I have frequent been with unknown minds, and given to time your own dear purchased right, that I have hoisted sail to all the winds, which should transport me farthest from your sight. Book both my willfulness and errors down, and on just proof surmise accumulate, bring me within the level of your frown. But shoot not at me in your wakened hate, since my appeal says, I did strive to prove the constancy and virtue of your love. What was his crime? Well, you're going to be a little bit of a, you know, you're going to, you're going to slap your forehead up in this one. Forgot to call her, as he says in Sonnet 117. Forgot upon your dearest love to call. His excuse was he was too busy. <clears throat> Where to all bonds do time me day by day. And he went out partying with unknown minds. Here, unknown minds mean secretive scholars. did it despite her legitimate right to his time. Purchased implies a dowry, which tells us that these poems were written for the poet's wife. He challenges her to record his errors when he says, Book both my willfulness and errors down. And if it is proven her evidence is just, i.e. true, he will accept her anger. He says, and on just proof, surmise, accumulate, bring me within the level of your frown. But he doesn't want her to hate him. But shoot not at me in your wakened hate. Because he did his best to prove his love for her, as he says in the final couplet, since my appeal says, I did strive to prove the constancy and virtue of your love by defending her honor. We can probably date these poems to within a few months after December 1581. Because the poet hath taken his wife again, according to a diarist, in that month. And it is likely his father-in-law and wife insisted that he repair her reputation. Are the puzzle solutions 17, 34, 188, and 57. 188 is the digit sum number, 1 plus 8 is 9, and 8 is 17, and 57 is 17 plus 40. Here we present the man identified by the number 17. As in the poem, he accused his first wife of infidelity, which explains the final couplet. And he was estranged from her for many years, as he says in Sonnet 117, that I have frequent been with unknown mind. But he saw the error of his ways, because she must have booked his willfulness and errors down, 
and provided just proof. This is her hand reaching from heaven, holding his. He died in 1588, this year this miniature was painted. He was trained in law, which is why he put so casually, if this be error and upon me proved, I never writ nor no man ever loved. also wrote as Shakespeare. And of course we mean he was Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.